Okay. All right. So this is the Queen Battle of Battle First Aid Responder Services. Coming here from um, Harvard University campus in Cambridge, Massachusetts. I have a lot of time on my hands. I'm very happy to be here today. Um, I'm in the midst right now of getting published through the American Psychological Association. So right now I'm doing my very best to actually get published in an academic journal to start one of my first um, articles, briefings, on the low population of college students at Harvard and MIT. So right now I am in the midst of getting published at in um, a couple journals through the American Psych Psychological Association. So please wish me luck as I go through the editing. I'm going through the editing process right now, <laughs> through the editor, through, through the editors at a couple academic journals from the American Psychological Association, okay? I've already been submitted to a couple of journals, so keep me your thoughts and prayers. All right, so um, I wanna go ahead and talk about, this is my third video on the topic of abortion today. I said it in my previous videos before. I am a certified medical assistant uh, first aid adult and pediatric first aid. I have been in the AIDS ASTD doing um, services, clinical side, as well as community health services in the community, the gay, lesbian, transgender community, rainbow community in various different cities across the United States, especially in Southside Chicago, Washington, Washington D.C., um, New York, Florida, as well as Dallas, Texas. So I'm very much in San Francisco. California. Love San Francisco, California. So I have been a recipient of, of services for AIDS, AIDS STD treatment at services as well as on the clinical side of providing services for those in the community. So I think it's a great opportunity to be both a customer, a, a recipient as well as clinical services to provide it as well now of course I encourage you guys to please get tested continue to get tested for HIV and STDs I am HIV negative which is a great thing okay I would encourage you guys to know your status okay to know your status okay continually I always maintain to get tested every six months just to make sure you are on the safe side of what your status is so I again I would encourage you guys here on my Facebook platform as well as on all my social media platforms again to know your status okay to know your status okay which is something that um to know your status okay now I'm sure um everybody has a job to do everybody has a job to do but you have to maintain who you are especially if you are in the community okay if you are in the community Okay, gay, bi, bisexual, transgendered, as well as you are a sex worker. It is very important to still know your status, to know your status, okay? To continually be updated and to know your status. It's a quick, quick test. You can go to clinic receive services there, as well as um, you can go to CVS, Walgreens, Target, Walmart, any kind of pharmacy, retail pharmacy, there is a couple of off-the-counter tests. You can take HIV testing services. They cost as cheap as 20 to 25 off-the-counter retail prices, as well as up to 30, 45, even as most expensive, the most I've seen for an off-the-counter retail price for an HIV test in stores is 50 bucks. So they're cheap, they are affordable, and you get the results at your in your home setting, okay, in the privacy of your own home setting to know your status. It's a quick, quick vocal swab through your mouth. You do a nasal, you do it's a swab in your mouth, mouth swab, and then you get the results in 25 to 30 minutes, even up to an hour, just depending on the test time, okay. So again, I would encourage you guys to get out there and to know your status. There are plenty of HIV testing services out there in the community as well too. So, um, I again, I'm glad right now that the um, I'm here at Harvard University campus. It is about 5:30 p.m. So you take the time. 6 6:15 here on Thursday evening. I'm glad to know that the DOG has actually DOJ has actually put into plan, put into focus laws mandating that they support efforts behind what is going on right now for the groups of women out there that are protesting against the injustice that is being done in the state of Texas. So I'm actually glad 
that the federal government is doing what they can. Oh, I have one person watching with me right now. Great, there's one person, that's great. So again, I'm very much happy that there are laws put into focus and laws put into plan that support, um, the federal government does support women's reproductive and sexual rights. That's a great thing, that's a great thing. At the same time though, um, you still have to, um, as a male, female, trans, transgender, um, I am she, her, whatever you are, whoever you, whoever you identify yourself to be, um, I still would encourage you to continue to get tested for um, STDs and HIVs, which has not been talked about since the onslaught of the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, everybody has on Facebook, we still, hello, hello. So, which has not been talked about um, since the onslaught of the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, it has not been talked about, but that is another issue that still has to be discussed. I'm gonna go ahead and give some rates right now um, of, of HIV, uh, some stats right now, STD, HIV stats since uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So here it is um, from the CDC, Center for Disease Control and Prevention, cdc.gov. Trends in STD case reports during the U.S. COVID-19 pandemic, January through December 2020, July 16th, 2021, during the COVID-19 pandemic, reported STDs in the United States dropped, then resurged. New CDC data that during March to April 2020 reported STD cases dramatically decreased compared to the same time in 2019. However, a resurgence in gonorrhea and syphilis cases later in the year suggests overall STDs may have increased during 2020. As of December 12th, the cumulative totals for 2020 cases, the year of 2020 STD cases, compared to 2019 were chlamydia, 14% higher, gonorrhea, 7% higher, primary and secondary syphilis, 1% lower. Uh, three, the three factors likely contributed to initial decrease in reported cases. It says it says that there was a decrease in reported cases, but right here it says that the very first it says during the COVID-19 pandemic, reported STDs in the United States, they did drop, but then they resurged and went back up. So it's right here in the CDC. So it says the rates of STDs dropped in during the COVID pandemic, and then they went back up. Okay. So three factors likely contributed to the initial decrease in reported cases. Reduced screening. Many healthcare clinics limited, limited in-person visits to symptomatic cases or closed the closest cases completely. Okay, there is limited resources available for clinics. Uh, many state and local department STD staff were redirected from routine STD responsibilities to COVID-19 activities, which affected STD tracking capacity and reporting. So a lot of these clinics were forced to close their doors. Now, I'm not talking about parent parenthood. I'm talking about a lot of other basic community clinics, community healthcare clinics were forced to close their doors because they had to focus primarily on testing for COVID-19, as well as testing for COVID-19 activities which affected STD tracking capacity and reporting. So they were forced to, forced to focus on COVID tracking versus STD tracking. You see how that works? And then on top of that, they had, um, they had isolation orders, stay at home orders, which were intended to reduce COVID-19 spread, which may have influenced sexual behaviors and reduced STD transmission. So stay at home orders, which were intended to reduce, which were intended to reduce um, COVID-19 spread, 
but may have influenced sexual behaviors and reduced STD transmission. So, put on that. So, that's not really talking about, that's not really giving, the CDC is saying that the stay at home, stay at home orders reduce STD transmission. Not necessarily the case. Not necessarily the case because during the COVID 19 pandemic, the, the rates of being a sex worker rose up. And so, the influence of being a sex, sex worker during the pandemic rose up. And therefore, cases in HIV transmission as well as STD transmission rose up during the pandemic. And therefore, even though we had stay at home, stay at home orders as well as um, being quarantine orders from our city, our mayors, as well as our governors, uh, quarantine orders that still do not influence people from getting caught with um, gonorrhea, chlamydia, whatever kind of STD infection was uh, around. Okay, so people were still catching STDs. Okay. Top of it, it said, CDC identifies several ways STD services can meet more people uh, during the pandemic, which is, of course, um, clinics, express clinics. They provide walk-in testing, which is great during the pandemic. So a lot of these clinics, um, minute, a CVS Minicare Clinic did STD testing. Walgreens had clinics, as well as local hospitals also had their express care clinics, too. So you had the emergency, emergency side of the of the hospital, which focus focus on emergency services as well as COVID COVID services, testing services for emergency patients, and then you also had different different hospitals. They had the emergency room side, and then they also had express checking. Which here in Boston, there's a couple hospitals. I know there's more than three to five hospitals that that separate that isolate regular, more vital emergency emergency room visits versus express. Uh, minor uh, minor injuries minor uh, minor difficulties and it focuses on some, something more, much more expedient okay okay and as well as partnerships with pharmacies retail healthcare clinics so pharmacies were also involved in testing too they also had vaccination clinics were set up at a pharmacy CVS Walgreens Target Walmart pharmacies also set up vaccination clinics too as well during the pandemic and then on top of that on top of that, telehealth and telemedicine, which closed the gaps in testing and treatment, ensured access to healthcare providers, support self-testing, and or patient-collected specimens, especially in rural, rural areas. So the advent, okay, the increase of telehealth services also, also worked during the COVID pandemic to help more people be aware of what was going on during the pandemic. Okay, so it says right now people are, their defenses are down because of STDs, okay? It's critical to prioritize and focus efforts to control the spread of STDs. This includes on the ground support for prevention and surveillance programs at the state and local level, okay? So again, um, right now it showed um, this chart in here that says after COVID-19 stayed at home orders in spring of 2020, STD cases dropped to 50% in chlamydia, 71% in gonorrhea, 64% in syphilis of the 2019 levels. And then um, they rose in December 2020, weekly STD cases were at 101%. Chlamydia was at 101% in December 2020. Gonorrhea was at 135%. Uh, in December of 2020. This is according to the CDC. As well as syphilis was at 151% in December 2020, according to trackers by the CDC. So the cases of gonorrhea, chlamydia, and syphilis rose in during the pandemic. And all of this is, is, is available on the uh, CDC website. Right here, all of this is available on the CDC website. Okay, so the rates of gonorrhea, chlamydia, and syphilis rose from 101 to 151% during the COVID, COVID, COVID pandemic of starting around um, mid-summer to late fall of 2020, okay? So, So these were the current trends. Again, all of this is available on cdc.gov, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys this link right here. Okay, so 
again, the rates of transmission has gone up, especially during the pandemic, okay? So you can check this website for cdc.gov. Look at all these results I gave you. The, the article is called Trends in SED Case Reports During the U.S. COVID Pandemic of January to December 2020. Right now, we're at the end of 2021. Right now, we're into August, September of 2021, which has a lot to do with the exposure. And we're coming into um, herd immunity, okay? We are coming into meeting the onslaught of herd immunity, okay? As you were talking about when Cuomo, Governor Cuomo was in office, as well as with uh, Dr. Fauci, Tony Fauci in D.C., and Dr. Rochelle Walensky in Washington, D.C., we are at the onslaught of herd immunity. At the same time, though, we still have a lot more to go through with and overcome, especially how, how as a population of Americans, uh, right now the current U.S. population is at 250 million uh, more or so less, okay, because of the population decline. Even though we are in a population decline, that still has not affected the rates of STD and HIV transmissions in the United States, okay? It has not affected STD and HIV at all, at all, okay? All right, okay, so again, um, chlamydia was, was 14% lower, gonorrhea was 7% higher, and syphilis was also 1% lower as of 2020. But it, it, it set right here, it went up all the way up to 100%, 102% during the end of 2020 in December. Okay, so again, um, like I said before, a lot of this access right now, which we're fighting for, we're not only fighting for uh, women health care, reproductive health care, abortion services health care, we are also fighting for sexual health care and reproductive health care services too as well with the... Uh, law that put into effect uh, was, that has passed forth in the Texas legislature, okay? So you can actually sue somebody, get sued just for taking somebody to a regular clinic, and you're take, taking somebody to a clinic, and that clinic, that clinic visit has nothing to do with abortion, but still, that person, that driver, that doctor, nurse, or any other kind of allied healthcare staff can still be sued from a private citizen, okay? They can still be sued by a private citizen based on the services, okay? Based on what was going forth, okay? So again, a lot needs to be done. We have a lot more to talk about this. I'll try to share this with you guys when I'm talking about my phone, my computer kind of went in and off and on, but you still have to uh, work on it work on taking care of yourselves as well as taking care of your family. Now, controlling something, it won't stop the disease. Okay, you can try to control the disease, but it still won't stop it from trans, you know, it still won't stop people from getting it, okay? You can try to control the disease as much as you want, but it still won't stop people from catching HIV, and STDs. It still won't stop them. So you have to do what is necessary in order to get things done, okay? Take care of yourself and your welfare and your health care as well as to continue to be informed of you and your rights, of you and your loved ones. Okay, all right. Okay, sexual health care and reproductive health care is great, okay? We're not just talking about we're not just talking about abortion rights. We're also talking about um, rights to access to health care treatment, okay? Sexual reproductive services. Birth control is on top of those services, as well as um, getting well women exams, okay? The opportunity that a lot of these clinics have enforced is for women to get access to reproductive health care, pap smears, well women exams, breast exams, mammograms, a lot of these clinics have put into motion, especially 
what Planned Parenthood supports is breast exams as well as gynae, OBG, OBG gynae exams and gynae services treatment is what Planned Parenthood supports, okay? So you have to figure out where you are going to and what is being done right now in the law of the land, okay? It's a lot, okay? So again, it won't, it won't, it won't happen overnight. These laws won't happen overnight, but it's going to take some time. Okay? It's going to take some time to put things into motion, put things into effect. Okay, you have to figure out what is your job and where do you need to be, and how can you be of best help? How can you be of best assistance to those involved? Okay, now this law right now it says. It, also, it mainly applies to abortion services, but it could be any kind of clinical clinic visit at an abortion clinic. Any kind of clinical visit. Any kind of clinical visit. You can still sue somebody. And it's really sad to say. It's really sad. If you are any kind of clinic that provides these services, if you are going to that clinic, you can still be sued. Okay? If the clinic provides abortion services. Okay? It doesn't have to be pet care here. It could be any kind of clinic, community clinic, okay? It is sad, all right? But I would encourage you guys to go out there and get tested, continue to get tested for HIV and STDs. Check with your local health department as well as go out there and reach out to you, your family, and your loved ones, okay? You can do the very best you do, do the very best you can. Continue to check with the World Health Organization, the CDC, the Department of Public Health, as well as the White House Council on the COVID Task Force. See what the White House is saying about HIV and AIDS too as well. Check with your local health department and your community advocates and resources, okay? So this is a queen battle about a first aid responder services. The phases of the moon are changing, but you don't have to. You just adjust to however your life wants you to take into effect, all right? Okay, so I wish you guys all the best coming here live from Harvard University Science Building. Very happy to be here today and very happy to here be here and do the very best you can, okay? Please, I would encourage you guys to still get tested for HIV and STDs. Know your status. Please continue to know your status, okay? Wherever you are in the world, know your status all right so this is a queen battle about a first aid responder service continue keeping your thoughts and prayers i do take donations uh cash app paypal and venmo at battle first aid responder services as well as um you can i have i'm a published author on barnes and nobles and amazon my latest book is called being of need about first aid services at boston logan airport during the 2021 um pandemic Okay, so we're happy to have my latest book is translated in English and Spanish. It is called Being of Need. Okay, Being of Need. So, guys, continue to go out there and know your status. You don't have to go to the clinic to know your status. You can buy a quick test, okay, a test, HIV test at any of your local pharmacies, Walmart, Target, CVS, Walgreens. It's a quick test. I think the last one I called is called Oraquick. Quick swab, a, a 10, 15, 30 minute swab in your mouth, okay? You get your results in about 15 to 20 minutes to know your status, okay? All right, this is a clean battle. God bless you guys.